I do think, as I just told the staff, there's no question we're better than when we played them in game one. Uh, you always have that fear of their explosiveness. You know, what you saw against us in game one, you know, what you saw when they had three opponents there in a four-game stretch, all down by 30-plus. You know, what you saw in their 28 to nothing run in Ann Arbor. Like, you always have a fear of that with them. They're so explosive offensively. I thought we did a good job uh, playing uh, uh, and doing what we needed to do in the first half. Um, uh, I thought our defense was good. I, I thought we got great shots. Um, I thought we played really connected. Uh, I, I thought we did some good things in that half, uh, kind of piggyback in the last three games. And then in the second half, I just thought Yogi Farrell took the game over, and not just from a scoring perspective. You're standing courtside, and you just you hear his voice constantly, um, his leadership capability his enthusiasm, his passion, he's clapping his hands, he's talking to his teammates, he's communicating with the bench, he's into the game, and he's into the game whether or not he makes a shot or not. That's just kind of who he's become over four years. I've got, I've got great admiration for him uh, because, number one, he plays two ends of the floor. And he, he, he's a guy that, that uh, really competes and can be disruptive on the defensive end. And then number two, I've kind of watched his evolution coaching against him over four years of how he makes his teammates better and how he talks and connects those guys. That's what leadership looks like uh, to me. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very respectful of uh, certainly what he brings to the table. They've got other really good players, don't get me wrong, but I think he, he gives them their edge. And I, I just thought he was the total uh, difference in the game at both ends. He was disruptive. Uh, we had to deal with him uh, on our offensive end. And then, obviously, he was terrific and made big shots on, on that end of the floor. You know, I thought we had some guys. Obviously, Jay Cole, I thought, played really well at both ends of the floor. Um, you know, we, we, we might make a mistake here or there. But tonight, you know, watching him and coaching him tonight, like it wasn't because of effort or locked in or, you know, he, I thought he really competed. We had a couple other guys that did as well for the, uh, for the 40 minutes. Um, I thought we had a lot of guys that did it for 20, 20 ish. And then when things got really tough, you know, I think we need more out of our upperclassmen. I've challenged them with that. Um, I think they can give more. I'm confident that they care enough that they will give more. But it's February. When you're in February, your upperclassmen have really got to step up and they've got to inspire and connect and unite your team. Today I just didn't feel that way in the second half. I thought their guy was able to do that for their team and we just needed more of that from our older guys. So we've got a lot to work on here, obviously, the next two days before we play a uh, senior day game on Sunday. Um, you know, again, I thought the first half was good. The second half, we just – I didn't like our response. thought the start of the second half, I will say this, was a big deal in the game. We had some good looks offensively. I really didn't have much of a problem with our offense other than the times where we got a little sloppy with it. We had seven turns first half, five second half. It's about three or four too many. But it was really the defensive end. You know, it's hard in this league. You give up 58%. And obviously they earned some of them. I know once they got going, they were really, really difficult to defend. Uh, but giving up 58% and a half against a really good team like them who's playing well right now is a recipe for disaster. And, uh, you know, give them credit for executing. You know, obviously we've got to play two halves, um, you know, better than we did today. Uh, but my gut tells me the bulk of that credit, you know, again, I'm, I know I'm wearing this out, but I just thought Farrell was – was really dominant uh, at both ends of the floor. Questions for J. Cole? What it was about the ball movement that held the team to six total assists? Um, I can't really speak on everyone's behalf, but um, you know what I try to do personally is, you know, because I'm being a threat offensively, shooting the ball, shot faking. Um, and then, you know, getting in the middle of paint touches. Uh, we've been working on that in practice. Um, and what I tried to do um, was, you know, if I didn't have it, look at the rim, kick it out um, to at least create, you know, some type of offensive threat. But as far as everybody, I, I feel like that's something we constantly work on. Um, and that's something that you know, we probably could, we definitely could have done better, get more paint touches and look, you know, inside out. So. 
Jalen, you made a shot to make it 45-37, and then Indiana missed on the other end, and then Finky missed a three that could have brought it within five. What happened after that point where Indiana, obviously Coach mentioned, mentioned Yogi taking over the game at that point, but beyond that, what happened in your mind on both ends of the floor for you guys offensively and defensively that allowed the game to get away from you at that point? Um, we, we gave, you know, a high motor team, uh, you know, uh, good look. I mean, we gave them heart. I, I feel like uh, when you give a high motor team like that who's playing as well as they are and, you know, got a lot of guys coming back, you know, uh, you know, like he's a, that's a recipe for disaster. And you know, when when the team gets going like that, and we need stops, you know, the teams we go on runs, they go on runs, but we need to nip it in the bud as soon as possible. And we can, you know, if we let that compile, that's a recipe for disaster. And we need to figure out a way to, you know, nip it in the bud as soon as possible. <clears throat> Just one home game left uh, after tonight. What uh, what are your thoughts on trying to get ready for that win to, to get a game, get a win for the final home game of the season? Um, shoot, listen to well, the practice uh, schedule. Uh, whatever we have, um, coach has for us for practice and uh, key in on that so we can progress and continue to build. Uh, we don't we gotta continue to play. So here in the middle. I mean, the last two games, uh, kind of let things slip away in the second half. What maybe can the team do better to, to close out a game uh, instead of you know, letting it slip away? Um, right now, that's not uh, – I can't really give you an answer. Uh, that's probably going to ask Coach that. Uh, right now, uh, you know, I feel like you just got to follow practice, you know, and the schedule and the plan and uh, kind of work off our mistakes and watch film. So. over offensively did you feel like you know the other guys weren't getting going I need to maybe look for my shot a little more no I just played my game uh, you know coach trust me to um, shoot the ball and you know make some plays now you know I've limited my turnover to assist ratio uh, all right so um, you know that's progression uh, he trusted me more um, and right now I'm just playing this out of my room here in the back of the room. Jalen, all year, uh, Coach has been trying to find some leadership from somebody on the court. Do you feel like it's something you could do? I feel like it's something everybody could do better. Um, right now, uh, we got a lot of experienced guys, uh, elite players, high level <coughs> players, um, and they're capable of doing it. And they show and practice and stuff like this. It's just right now, we need to uh, put it together and let it, you know, sh and make sure it shows in, in games because that's when it matters the most. Any other questions for Jalen? All right, thank you. Questions. questions. Right here in the middle. John, that's you know a couple games in a row here where the second half it just it didn't happen. Is is there something you're seeing from your players mentally, emotionally? Each both games are uh, each game's different, Jeremy. The two games, um, you know, every game's different. Um, I thought offensively, you know, we had five turns, and I'm going back in my mind right now on the turnovers we had. Uh, we had one or two there that were a little sloppy, but I thought the bulk of our issues at that end were missing shots that we made in the first half in t t today's game. In today's game. Um, on offense, but again, at the other end, I mean, at fifty-eight percent, and you know, I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, you you give up fifty-eight, and if you could point to one common denominator, Jeremy, and probably the two games, it would be second half affecting field goal defense. You know, your field goal defense affecting their field goal percentage. Those look eerily similar to me. You know, we've got to be able to impact the game defensively. That's where it's at. I mean, it's that simple. Now, what goes into that? Obviously, leadership, youth, um, execution. Um, the execution of the other team being good. Um, 
you know, experience. There's a lot of factors. You know, there's a lot of factors in, in, that go into that, and each game is different. Um, you know, but you know, we guys were ready to play. I thought I thought we had a good first half. I thought we really came out swinging, and, and I thought our execution was good. We played with a lot of purpose. I thought we did that offensively to start the second half. Shots just didn't go in. We've got to be a little bit more mature, Jeremy. When shots don't go in, we can't be. You know, we we got to find a way to get stops, to minimize those runs. You're not always going to make every shot. You know, in my time in, in this league now, two different stints, I do know one thing, and that is your ability to defend and rebound allow you to play consistently. And if you're, if you're not affecting the game defending and rebounding, you're basically in a league where you're going to have to make a really, really high percentage night in, night out. And that's hard to do. You know, very few teams do that, you know. Uh, consistently, but I do think the best ones have a way to impact the game, defending and rebounding. We're going to continue to wear that out, and we'll we'll get it. And some of the young guys have got to get physically stronger. You know, I watch a couple of those blockouts on their guys down low by a couple of our rooks, and it's like, holy cow, they look like paperweights. You know, we got we got to get stronger, and we will, we will. This has been great for those guys um, in terms of learning. And uh, we're going to be better, you know, because of it, especially once we start to get healthy and these guys are getting more experience, you know. So, I'll, you know, I'll certainly keep the big picture in mind, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, for us, I thought the second half, the difference was feral. I just thought he was, you know, he just – I'm standing there courtside. I just – you know, you can just feel him. And uh, I, I don't know if I've, you know, all year now coaching 28 games – Played against a lot of really, really good players, talented players, all Americans, all that. I don't know if I play coached against a guy that has an impact at two ends of the floor, and you can hear him as much as you hear him. You know, like he's, you know, he's he's really it's amazing uh, freshman to to now where he's at with that. In the back of the room. Hey, John. Um, yeah. You've played Indiana twice now, and they beat you pretty handily both times. What, what, what do you think of this Indiana ball club? Well, obviously, they're terrific offensively. They're very difficult to defend, not only for us, but for a lot of teams. Uh, you follow their, you know, you see their uh, average margin of victory or point margin is like top five in the country. That's not an accident, you know. Um, they're, they're really good on that end. And I think... You know, the one thing about them maybe this year versus last year is they're impacting the game on the defensive end a little bit more. Um, and I think that's making them much more of a, of, of a complete team. But, um, you know, I, I think they're, you know, they're good offensive rebounding. I mean, they do a lot of things well. But a lot of times, as I said earlier, it takes one guy to kind of, you know, spearhead that a little bit. And I think now coaching against them two times, I really – you know, I hate to keep wearing it out, but I just think Farrell is a you know, difference maker at both ends of the floor. Scott, here in the middle. Hey, your last two losses, uh, games, I think you said, and the player said, you know, thought they played well enough to win. Is tonight a step backward from that? Nah, first half we did. You know, for sure, I thought we played you know, really well in the first half. Uh, I told you that. I thought we played well in Evanston. I thought we played well here for 25 minutes against Rutgers. I thought we played really well in Madison, and I thought the first half today was good. And those are all positive steps. And uh, I certainly don't want to take anything away from our guys. But at the end of the day, like, you know, we want more. We're hungry for more. Certainly I am. I know they are. And uh, we're going to keep pushing. But to do that, we got to embrace the little things. You know, we've got to communicate better. Um, we can't tie defense to offense. You know, we've got to rebound better. We've got to block out better. We've got to do all those little things better. And uh, I've seen some progress for sure, for sure, in a lot of individual players and uh, with some team aspect stuff too. But, you know, it just wasn't enough today. I mean, they were so good in the second half. And, again, Farrell I thought was the difference. Here on the right, Shannon. You mentioned um, Malcolm a little bit on the radio, but just wondering if you could elaborate on that. It just how much of it is him being needing to be more aggressive? How much of it is how Indiana handled him? You know, my biggest thing with him is is I need him and the upperclassmen to to, to connect our guys. You know, to um, you know to communicate to quite honestly do what Yogi Ferrell does for Indiana. Maybe that's the best way I can put it. 
That's what we need. In terms of like making shots or if he misses a shot, we all know Malcolm is talented. Malcolm does a lot of things. Malcolm's very versatile. There's a lot of things Malcolm can do about anything he puts his mind to. Um, I, I like, you know, him. he's been more consistent this year for sure than the previous two, but I think he's got another step there. But the biggest thing right now is – is getting those guys to understand responsibility, accountability. It's February. Lead. Make sure guys are ready. Connect guys. Inspire guys. Enthusiasm. Body language. All those things are as or more important than whether your jumper's going or they doubled you on a pick and roll or you know the, 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 those first few things I mentioned. The intangibles. It's time. You know, and we and we need to, those guys to step up. And as J. Cole said, there's been times that they have. You know, we just we need that more consistently uh, from our upperclassmen. Is that their nature? People have asked me that. Like, probably not with some of them, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Some guys have that when it comes to that. You know, although I will tell you, I think as I mentioned earlier, big difference from Yogi freshman to now. You know, does a guy like Abrams have that? Absolutely. I mean, he's tough dude you know I mean so I, I but we gotta have more out of them on that end you mentioned the time I mean as in saying it's February so is it time to maybe think like turn to younger guys for that or, I mean do some of those younger guys have it or do, do no you we're, we're, it? we're gonna play as well and reach our potential with the current rendition of the team that we're playing we're gonna do that based on how well those four guys connect now, I've said that to them it's true I mean I think about all the great teams that I've coached as an assistant and as a head coach, you know, that you just, you know, again, I think Farrell has that for them, you know. You know, I've got a kid on my staff now who's our GA. When I was at the other place, I I just stayed out of the way. I mean, believe me, he was going to have them ready, you know. So by the time you get late and a guy's been with you, Shannon, two years, three years, and they, they've heard all the scouting. They know the players in the league. They know the style. They know our terminology. They know our system. They have got to share that with those other guys and make sure those other guys know it, embrace it. Um, and then when, you know, you hit a wall, like we all do in life sometimes or in ball, they got to help us push through that. And, uh, and they have at times for sure. We needed more of that. I just thought more of that tonight from them, and we'll we'll, we'll get out of get it out of them because they care. Scott, oh, when you say it's maybe not in some of those guys' nature to do that, how do you as a coaching staff go about trying to get that from them? If it's to you know, kind of break something that's really you know close to you know their personality. Yeah, I you know I think you know I think maybe the best way to put it, and I loved. Um, uh, Josh Whitman's press conference. I loved his comment about leadership being a coin, and I thought it was a great uh, point that he made by empowering them, which if you remember, you guys were there, he talked about that being on one side of the coin, empowering them, giving them ownership, saying, hey, let's go, man. Let's go. It's your team. Let's go. You've been here three years. Let's go. You should know more than them. You should be more consistent than the younger guys. Why wouldn't you? You've been here three years. You know, so empowerment, empowering them to lead. And then the second part to that, Scott's holding them accountable. You know, we all need accountability. You know, all of us do. You know, we all need accountability. For sure. I mean, I, I just, I, you know, I, I think that's the two parts to it. And those guys have been pretty responsive to that. Tonight, we just needed more. Jeremy, right here. Is game to game, and maybe it's too early to ask this question, but what do you, I mean, fans are trying to take away something from this year to build for the future. Sure. What, what are you taking away that is showing that the future is brighter? Yeah, I mean, that's that's easy. Obviously, you watch Maverick Morgan play. You know, Finky has, you know, obviously he played really well, especially early. You know, um, you know, has he been the same after the injury? He's going to get back there. I'm confident of that. DJ Williams is getting better. Jay Cole's getting better. Aaron Jordan's getting better. And all these guys that maybe had roles that they didn't foresee or any of us in here that follow us uh, would foresee that they would have to that level, they're going to benefit from that. You know, then you obviously got some guys that are banged up a little bit that will be coming back. And, you know, we're going to have a chance to be better. You know, there's no question about that. You know, did any of us foresee the – you know, all the things that we've went through, you know, no, but that's part of it. It's part of life, you know. Um, it's not going to deter us. You know, we have the same, 
the vision, the same mission as when we first arrived. That's not changing. You know, we we want to be we want to want to continue to hold our team and individual players to a level of excellence. You know, and uh, control what we can control. You know, sometimes you get cards. You got to play the cards you're dealt. And um, you know, here you know the second half today, I just didn't like our response in some areas, but. You know, over the last three or four games, there's no question I've felt like, and I've seen it in practice, that individuals are getting better and our team is, is, uh, is getting better. You know, there's no doubt about that.